before I go any further, if you like going longboarding and on long cruises, you gotta listen to this album, guys. It is lit. Especially on sunny days, I'm telling you, listen to the album. Alrighty boys, so we are currently six miles into this longboard trip that I'm currently on and well, my legs are relatively unfazed. Like literally my legs aren't sore at all. I'm breathing a little bit because you know, aerobic exercise and whatnot, but my legs are fine. Now, how did I manage to do this? Am I just built different? Well, no. The main reason is because I have a technique for going really far on my longboards and staying relatively, what's the word I'm looking for? Like unfazed as far as my leg soreness goes. So today that's what the video topic is gonna be. I'm gonna teach you guys how I can go really far distances on my boards without getting super tired. And they all involve really one main thing and that's gonna be learning how to ride switch. So if you don't know how to ride switch, I really, really encourage you to learn how to do that. If you want me to make more videos and tips on how to ride switch, definitely let me know. Drop it in the comments or hit the like button on this video for me, just so I know that that's something you guys wanna see. But without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys a few techniques I use to ride really far distances relatively easily. So let's get started. All right, so the first method that I use, it's a really simple way to swap your feet from switch to regular. So essentially, when you're on your board, all you wanna do, take your front foot, kind of pivot it to the left side of your board, or if you ride with your left foot in front, you pivot it to the right side of the board, and then you just spin your body and swap your foot. So a lot of times if I'm going really, really fast or something, this is the method I'll use because it doesn't involve having any feet come off the board. It's really simple to do that. And then if you want to go back to the other direction, you can just either do a little hop like this, you can do a spin backwards, or you can do the exact same thing where you put your foot like this, pivot over to the other side. That's like the main one that I'll do, especially if it is really fast kind of riding conditions. It's generally safer than the other ones just because of the fact that you're gonna be going really fast and you don't want your feet coming off of the board by accident or on purpose and then getting flung off. So that's the main one that I use most of the time. The problem with this one is it takes a little bit of time. It's not like super, super quick to do. So I have two other methods for you guys, two other methods that are gonna be a little, little bit quicker. Yeah, let's get into those. All right, so here is the next method. This one is really good for just when you're doing slow cruising or whatnot and you wanna swap your feet. So essentially what you do is you're riding on your board and when you want to swap your feet to switch position, you take your back foot, hop off the board, take a step with your front foot, and then jump back on and you're on the other direction. I'll give you guys a couple other angles of that so you can see it a little better, but it's pretty, pretty simple. Alternatively, let me show you a really quick variation of that. It involves the same kind of stepping off the board, except your feet go on each side of the board. So this is what that looks like. Oh, you guys okay? Shoot. All right, you guys, before I get to the third reason, I have two really quick housekeeping slash update kind of things. Number one, yes, I'm still using my loaded Tantian. A lot of people keep asking me this because I always use my rain deck, and that's just because I really like doing tricks. My rain deck is my number one trick board. This one I use almost completely for cruising because it is my fastest board and it absorbs the most vibrations and it can go down hills unlike the rain one which can kind of struggle when it goes a little fast so that's number one number two a little uh sneak peek at something i got these little boys right here these are shred lights i have them right on this board right here and we're going to be doing a nice video on them as soon as i don't get tired at night and can record the lights out at dark <laughs> but uh yeah keep on the lookout for shred light video i am using my loaded tantian um what? there's an ant on my backpack get off ow my hand i'm planning on doing a one year review of 
this Nike SB backpack. I don't remember when I posted it. I want to say it was July, could have been August, so keep on the lookout for that. And also, last video, a lot of y'all told me you wanted to see more vlogs this summer. So, with that being said, we're going to be doing more vlogs this summer. I don't want to do too many though because I know they don't get a lot of views and I'm trying to get as many new OG gang members as I can this summer. But I will definitely be doing some vlogs for you guys. Um, and that, I think that about does it for the updates. Uh, if you guys want to know anything else, drop it in the comments and I will answer. But last time I'm going to ask you guys a question and then we'll get to reason number three. Should I do YouTube live streams? I've been thinking about making Fridays like a YouTube live day or maybe Thursdays or something. I'm not sure yet, but I think it'd be cool. I could interact with you guys. I could do lives outside in my house, answer questions, you know, clean bearings while I do it. I don't know. Uh, if that sounds like something that would be cool and you guys would be interested in participating in that, let me know in the comments. But anyways, let's get to reason number three. All right, y'all. Lastly, I have one final method. This is the ultimate, the big baller method. This is the one that is better than all the other ones, but also way harder to perform and pull off than all the other ones, okay? Here we go. All right, so with this method, this is the method I mainly use when I am going up hills because I need to be able to really quickly switch from left to right foot as fast as possible because hills kill your legs. So the trade-off in this method is you're gonna be working your aerobic system a little more, but you're gonna be saving your legs. This is how it works. Essentially, you're gonna have your front foot on the board, you're gonna be pushing, and when you wanna switch, you push, and as your foot gets off the ground, you jump and switch feet just like that. You're pushing, you're pushing, you push, jump, swap feet. Now this particular method is not easy to pull off at all. It takes a lot of balance and a lot of practice and you really, really have to know how to ride switch before you attempt this. But with that being said, this method is the best for going up hills because you instantly can swap back and forth if you really want your legs. And while it does make you more tired because you're jumping, you know, back and forth, it keeps your legs from burning. And that's what we're trying to do here. So those are the three methods that I have for doing that. They saved my legs. I'm already like seven or eight miles in since the last check-in we did, and my legs are perfectly fine still. I'm still I'm a little tired, obviously, but my legs are just chilling. So if you like these three methods, definitely hit the thumbs up button for me and hit the sub button if you're not already subscribed and in the OG gang. But that's all I got for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed. Peace out. Have a good rest of your day. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video, which is coming on Monday. Yeah, that's all I got. Bye guys.